We are live. Hello, everybody. I'm here, back in New York. Just um, going to wait for a few of you guys to join, and then we can get started. I want to hear from you. So I'm going to be looking at your comments, seeing what you guys say, and hey, the discussion can continue after this live stream is done. So hey, I want to hear from you. This is the opportunity for us to be a community together to interact with each other and, you know, commune. We're humans in it together. We're all in it together, you know. Um, we always think that we are different. We're so separate from each other. But at the end of the day, we are all the same. We are all humans having an experience. You know, we're individuals. Hey, love and light. D, yo, what's up? How's everybody doing? This is a discussion. Uh, if you make it through to the end of the discussion, maybe I'll pull up something magical, you know, just as the sugar for the medicine. But I'm assuming that most of you guys, if you guys are my fans, you guys have an interest in world peace. You want to make the world a better place. Um, you guys want to, you know, you guys are interested in things that go beyond the status quo. Um, oh, wow, there's protests at Mount Rushmore. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Um, am I choppy? Am I, like, really delayed? I saw, like, six people get on here right away, and then, like, most of them left. Is, it, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Maybe it's just not, like, the exciting levitation that people were wanting to see. I mean, would, would it help if I did something ridiculous to entertain you guys? I don't know. How can we make the world a better place? Stream is clear. Okay, people just have short attention spans. That's okay. We're having a discussion. Melissa, do you want to be in the discussion? What? I have a pretty girl that, that's always with me. You know, I think that that's, that's one of the keys to happiness. My mouth is you know, is, is uh, finding somebody that, that um, you can just really know inside and out another human. Right, and whether it's you know the same sex, opposite sex, no gender, nothing, um, the more the merrier. Well, yeah, I mean, but you know, sometimes it's hard to learn how to love, you know. And I think that one of the reasons why the physical reality was created this way, where you're supposed to find like one mate, and then once you can love one mate well enough, then you can have children that you raise into this world, you bring them into this world, and if you can love them, well, then you've, you've learned a lot. But even like my closest friends that I love very much, sometimes it's hard for me to like fully love them. Like you have falling outs with your friends and stuff. Um, what, yeah. What do you think, yeah, you did fall out with your friends. Sometimes you outgrow them, but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, I don't know. I think that like if you could find one person that you are in a relationship with, that's really where you begin to learn love inside and out. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, you don't have to be in a relationship to find love but, um, with someone else, but that's fine. Nah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah, you can love your parents. You yeah. Can, you know, you can take care of your parents. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff happening in the world. I want to hear from you guys. What are some of the current events? that are making you guys feel weird about the world and the state of society. Like, there's all these uh, protests against police brutality, Black Lives Matter. Um, people are protesting wearing masks. Like, they, they don't, they feel like the masks are uncomfortable. They want to get haircuts. The division. Yeah, it's divide and conquer. Um, you know, I see it as there's, a group of people that are afraid of change, right? They want to go back to these older ways of doing things. Maybe because they didn't feel disenfranchised by the system. Maybe they didn't feel oppressed by the system. Maybe they were benefactors of the corrupt system. Uh, and then you have another group of people over here that wants change, right? The group of people that doesn't want change, really, I see that they, they're afraid of the change. They're, they're, they're governed by fear. Um, and they, they don't want progress. They, they're the same ones that say, oh, these guys 
are so concerned with what's fair. Well, life isn't fair. Usually it's the people that are on the more the side that's more fair to them that are saying, well, life is more fair. Usually it's the people that are benefactors of the system that are saying, well, life's not fair, get used to it, right? Maybe they could justify saying that because they had an instance in their life where things weren't fair. They felt like things weren't fair too, so they're like, they feel like they can see. Yeah, I know the media has been bar bombarding it. Yeah, the people are afraid of change, you know? So when I see like facts brought up of, of the statistics of what's really going on and, and all this stuff, the group of people that are afraid of the change, really all they have to work with are tactics to try to show, to generalize the other side and say that, oh, this other side is, is um, they're, they're like, they're hypocrites. Oh, look at this other side, they're damaging property. All they have is to smear the side that wants change, right? That's, that's the only thing that they have. Uh, and to say, oh, life isn't fair. Uh, but they really can't explain how the way things used to be is better than the change that people want to see. They really can't articulate that, and that's what I'm noticing. Um, you know, it's just smear, 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 deflect, deflect, right? You notice that Donald Trump never mentions the Illuminati, right? He's done a masterful job of hijacking conspiracy theories uh, and divert attention away from what is actually going on, right? Notice he never says Illuminati. It's always deep state, deep state, right? So he's actually trying to get people to believe that instead of this group, the secret society of the Bohemian Grove, that happens at the Bohemian Grove of the Illuminati, that's really the billionaire class, this group of billionaires that pay their way to get into it, that instead of them running the world, he never even mentions them, instead of them running the world, it's a group of millionaire only Democrats called the deep state, right? Who are really pulling the strings, right? I would say what's more logical is the group of billionaires that are lobbying and financing both the Democrats and the Republicans, right? But isn't it weird how he's kind of like deflected people's attention away from the Illuminati and created this thing uh, with the help of Alex Jones, pedophile, I might say, add Alex Jones is a pedophile, that he's deflected it to being this deep state creation, right? Pizzagate, how well did Pizzagate work out for them? How well did the birther movement work out for them? And you know what? I don't care if I lose some supporters. I don't care if I lose subscribers by stating my beliefs and what's really going on. If you can't open your mind and begin to start to understand somebody else's worldview, um, then no magic for you. No magic for you, get it, right? It's like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I want to have a community of people who are against racism, who uh, are against um, the division that we've seen. And I know that what I'm talking about is divisive, right? Um, but it's like, yo, if you have, I study cults, right? I'm creating a mockumentary about starting cults, starting a cult of levitation, right? Um, and when you see people acting like they are zombies who have been brainwashed, who say the exact same predictable things, who just regurgitate Fox News slogans and things that they've heard off of Alex Jones, and when it's so easy to just disprove it with actual facts, and then you hear them say fake news, fake news, mainstream media, blah, 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 right? As a deflection of looking at information that's contrary to what they want to believe in, then I just have to call it out. You know, it's not, it's not division. Like, of course, if you get people to follow Nazi ideologies, right? You get a group of people to follow white supremacist ideologies. Yeah, that's going to be a divisive, divisive. And it's like, what else are you supposed to do than speak out against the racist ideologies? You know, it's like, oh, oh people can say, oh, that's divisive because you're, you're like fighting against this other side. You know, you're not trying to come together with this other side. What else are you supposed to do when you're dealing with brainwashed zombies? It's like, yo, like, you don't, in the zombie movies, nobody, nobody's trying to cure the zombies, right? 
They're, they're zombies, right? They're not going to come back to reality. They have to do it on their own. Okay, I will levitate any object at the end of this live stream, okay? Guys, I, I, I will do it. I, I promise. I've got this new illusion, too, that I want to show you. Maybe I'll get the video up and going today where I'm doing a Tesla coil levitation. Um, but right now, we are having a discussion. I'm not prepared to levitate any object. <laughs> right now, um, I want to have this discussion. So, first person to tell me an issue, we are going to discuss it. You want to start a cult, Recivit? Oh, man. Why don't you just join my cult and you can become a disciple? It's just for fun, though, okay, guys? And then we're going to make a mockumentary, and it's going to be really funny. Oh, man, love and light. Wow, man, you just donated to me? Yay! Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. You just donated. You donated. Okay, that, that calls for a levitation of some kind. All right, let me see here. Okay, guys, let's see. I don't know, this is pretty lightweight here. Superpower, yes, you are a donator. That makes me so happy. It makes me feel like I have purpose uh, in life. Um, let me see here. What, what sh ooh, ooh, how about COVID? Okay, so I have this little silly thing. Uh, I, I have to levitate light objects. I don't know, here's some paper I found. Uh, or I could levitate the mask that I wear every day for COVID prevention. Um, so yeah, it's, I, 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 yeah, I got your email, bud. Um, I, like I said, everything has to be really short and to the point. Um, I don't know what, tell me really quick, how did you want me to respond or, um, you know, cause, cause I, I only have so much, uh, time to read things. I'm, I'm really sorry about that, but um, I, I like to do communications on these forums because that way I can like address everything in real time and um, you know, then then we have uh, You know, we just have a discussion right now. It, it's it saves it saves me some time um, But yeah, so what's up Recivit? What what do you want to talk about man? tell me What's going on with you? And uh, then we can do more, then we can levitate. Give, okay, so what should I do? What should I levitate? A uh, COVID mask? Or should I levitate uh, some paper? Yeah, you changed the world, that's great. I mean, I think we all, like, if you're good, if you're a good person, you want to feel like you changed the world and stuff. Um, you know, we all want to feel like we're we're doing something good to to benefit all of us. Um, yeah, buddy. Okay, let me let me get a COVID mask. Okay, I'll levitate a COVID mask. Oh, right. Coming right back, buddies. Well, what'd you say? That's a new person here. I think that we all have to start at ourselves because we make the world. Yes. Okay. Since, since she says, I think we all have to start at ourselves because we make the world a better place. Uh, it's all a reflection. So for X, you have to love yourself to love others. That's correct. Yes. Some wisdom right there. Uh, take a look at the man in the mirror, even though uh, it was Michael Jackson singing that. I think he needed to take his own message and, um, you know, not be a, what it, what it, the P word. Okay, so somebody asked me, they said levitate any object. COVID awareness. What would you say? Thank you. China, I mean, look, we are all in the dark. We are all these 
souls that are placed in the physical bodies. Um, and, you know, we, we are like so in the dark. Basically, the only way that we know about purpose is that God sent these messengers down that were like reflections of God, like the moon. We can see the sunlight through the moon, but like God's light is too powerful for us to like see it as physical bodies. We are, we are still just like baby souls. It would crush us. Okay, so, um, oh, how are you doing, Steve? I'm good. It's hard. Yeah, what the heck is right? Oh, really? I helped you learn throat scene. Can you, can you do it? You can do it pretty good. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like you you hit the sweet spot in your throat of of vibrating. Yes, yeah, superpower. You stayed on long enough to see me levitate something that was lightweight really i can just do uh lightweight objects um is pretty funny so yeah like this is the question how can we change the world for the better how can we make the world a better place it's like the whole reason why i'm an entertainer performer is because i wanted to get people's intent attention because I had this really unique upbringing of being raised in the Native American Peyote Church and Baha'i, which shows you opposite sides of the spectrum as far as one is a very ancient, earthy, primal religion and one is a very new, modern, mainstream religion. Uh, I talk about this all the time. And so I realized, wow, I was gifted with this very unique perspective in life and I should share that with the world. Um, that was my intention, and I thought I was going to do it with music. So I was making electronic music, you know, and like beatboxing, all that. Um, but I just kind of like, I was receptive and open to the powers of the universe and through being willing to alter what my uh, pursuits as careers is concerned, um, I discovered levitation, and that turned out to be the big attention getter that I needed to uh, catch the world's attention. Um, you know, maybe I've, I've made mistakes along the way. You know, I've, I've let people know about my true intentions uh, way too early. So it seems like uh, the people running Hollywood and uh, mainstream media, uh, not saying that as like a Trump supporter or deflection or anything, but they, I'm not brand friendly. I'm a non-starter, right? So. They're probably not going to let me have my TV own TV show ever, anything like that, because the message that I have is anti-consumeristic. Do you ever notice that the economy, how well the economy is doing and how well the environment is doing are inversely related? Like if the economy is doing well, the environment's not doing well, right? So I'm anti-consumeristic because uh, consumerism is just a cog in the machine. It's part of the machine. Uh, of, of profit, gener profit generation and wealth extraction. Everything that's going on right now, everything that you're doing, going to the store, buying stuff, um, is me meant to be uh, a, wealth a means of wealth extra extraction because um, the powers that be have created this mag system of magnetism to draw up all the money to the top, right? Uh, and the, the way inflation works, right? It's like, yo, you could save some money but your, um, your money is just gonna be worth less and less and less. And the only way to stem that is to invest in the stock market, right? If you have savings, right, the only way to, to not, you can invest in gold or the stock market because right now interest rates are so low, if you're gonna get bonds or CDs or anything like that, you're actually investing at a rate lower than inflation. And with Trump, um, 
With Trump racking up the hugest debts in American history, inflation is the worst ever that it's ever been. I studied economics, by the way. There's so much that people don't know about me. People think that I'm just this like monk guru guy, but um, you know, I'm I'm a lot of things. Um, I'm like a chameleon. I, I could play many different roles. So, wealth extraction, consumerism. Um, you know, so if you try to compete with inflation and invest your money in the stock market, the sad thing is that you are going to come into that as an uninformed investor. And you're competing with people that are running these crazy algorithms that are these huge investment firms that run algorithms specifically designed to, to um, capitalize off of uninformed investors, right? They're writing algorithms for the fact that there's just regular Joe Schmo people trying to invest in stocks on their own just so they can reap extra profits off of causing losses for you. Right, so the system is rigged against you. If you are on here right now, chances are the system is rigged against you. Um, oh, third eye opened. I mean, I have intuition. I would say that. I, I think that this whole thing about black and white, are you enlightened, is your third eye opened, um, it's kind of like, I, I try to be humble about all that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not a sh no shaman ever says that they're a shaman. Um, I just try to be like, the, the most enlightened people that I ever met didn't know what the word enlightenment meant, right? It was out of their vocabulary. They're the most poor people that I've met in Africa and the Middle East, right? So I feel like humility uh, and, and living in poverty is, is the ultimate enlightenment. Um, that, that's just what I believe. I really, really value. I have, I can have an ego at times. I mean, heck, it's hard to be awesome. But I can have an ego at times, so I really admire and value humility, right? You, I consider me an unfinished puppet myself, said Ancient. I mean, heck, our, we are talking about souls and um, the body Maybe our body is the puppet and our soul is the puppet master, right? I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe we're all God's puppets and we don't really have free will and we are just, you know, going through this, like, kind of like just to experience it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes I have these, I had a psychic premonition that I was going to ruin my uh, uh, uncle's surprise party, and I was trying really hard not to ruin the surprise. And then my mother calls me on the phone to tell me that my grandfather passed away, and she's asking me about, you know, different weekends uh, when, when they could have the funeral. And I say to her, oh, well, I mean, th th I'm already coming up to go to Uncle Josh's surprise party. Well, guess what? She had me on speakerphone and I ruined the surprise by saying that. She didn't tell me that I was on speakerphone and that my Uncle Josh was in the room with her, right? So it was really crazy. I had this voice in my head telling me before this, don't mess up your uncle's surprise party. You're going to mess up your uncle's surprise party. You know that you're going to mess up your uncle's surprise birthday party and ruin the surprise. I couldn't get that thought out of my head. And then it freaked me out because I was like, oh my God, like no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't reverse the, the fate of me ruining this, you know, and I had the psychic premonition about it. And I'm like, how can I even know when these psychic premonitions are reality and when it's just my head playing tricks on me, you know? And so it kind of tripped me out a little bit. But so we are so in the dark, you know, have I ever been a Christian? I went to Presbyterian youth groups. And be, coming from a uh, Baha'i background, the Baha'i youth groups, they uh, had probably like 70% studying Baha'i writings and 30% like playing and having fun. And then I went to the Presbyterian youth group and they had 70% or 80% or, or having fun and 20% studying the Bible. And so for me as a kid, that was a lot more fun. So I got really into the Presbyterian youth groups. I've read much of the Bible. Um... And, you know, I've been to church, but I've, I, the thing is, is like Christianity is just a, it's a progression of religions and faiths. And 
So I, thankfully being raised Baha'i, which they basically believe that their prophet is the return of Christ, uh, Baha'i has newer, fresher writings that have kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, a rekindling of the word of God that like it, um, you know, it's modernized the word of God because the Bible honestly was written for people 2000 years ago. It was written at their level, you know, of, of understanding, you know, and now we've progressed. It's like a lot of now uh, my friend Perry who runs uh, the Paradise Project is I wanted to do a video with him because he's talking about how there's a spiritual vacuum, a spiritual void that people are filling with um, consumerism, you know, worshiping money, Trumpism, right? Like Trumpism has become a cult. Um, good night. Hey, that could be like somebody saying goodbye because I said something that didn't agree with their worldview. I don't know. Um, but so I, I can't, people always ask me how to do this stuff and like, man, nobody's even bought any t-shirts on here. So like, Hey, but thank you for the donations. Uh, but sometimes, uh, sometimes people like want to know my secrets and stuff. And I'm like, man, I don't, I want to be unique. You know, like I want, it's like, sometimes people just like want. They they want to they want to support me because they want to be me or they want to be able to do what I can do, you know. It's like it's like I I I had to struggle to like learn this. Um. But, anyways, yeah. Exactly. Hey, can you ever been Christian? So yeah, to answer. So they're doing a I think starting the July fourth to July seventh they're doing like. Like three or four full days of buy nothing, right? Don't buy anything. Um, yeah. The, I, there's buy nothing. So come after the 4th, starting Sunday. Uh, if you guys want to be in solidarity to kind of hit the profits, the big corporations that are running our, our world, um, buy nothing next week. Try to buy, do all your grocery shopping right now, get everything you need, and then just stop shopping. Because basically what happens is that the stock market is taking gauge of, oh, how is retail doing? How much stuff is getting bought and sold? So if they have a week where sales drop incredibly, this is going to cause the stock market to drop. Uh, and hey, maybe if you short sell some stocks, you can make money off of it. Um, we, we want change. We are demanding change. Um, and... I don't know. What do you guys think about Black Lives Matter and the Black Lives Matter protests that's going on? Sometimes people go too far and then it allows people that are against that type of movement to change things. But as someone who's, I've been a victim of police brutality, that's not on YouTube. Um, I really, really stand for the system needs to be changed. Okay. And that if a system requires that property get destroyed in order to stop to start paying attention to human life and offer justice, then the system needs replacement. The system needs drastic change. Okay, so people are saying, oh, it's so messed up that, oh, the protests are all rioting and looting and destroying property. Oh, they burnt. Look, Minneapolis, the district attorney in Minneapolis did not charge the, 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 the officer who murdered George Floyd with a crime until the day after the police uh, department burned, that precinct burned, okay? And this is what we see happen every time. It's like the cops murder some guy, all the cops, you know, working on their team come together to corroborate a lie. Then video footage comes out that contradicts that lie and says, oh, wow, all the cops are lying, right? And then people, they won't press charges or it's like half, half charges, and then finally, there's damage to property, there's rioting, and then finally after the rioting and the destruction of property, the DAs finally charge the cops. The justice finally is, is received. So it's like what they're doing is they're reinforcing negativity that, the, that rioting is what's necessary to receive justice. What was said?
Well, since you, I would say that race, the concept of race is a concept that was created by uh, white supremacy in the first place. It was European white supremacy. Um, and they're the ones that, that created this concept of race because it was their way of classifying people in a way to, to discriminate against them and to oppress them. R ethnicity is real. Race is a social construct, right? Because um, it's like they're just classifying people as like, oh, you look different than us because you're black. Oh, you within black, there are so many different ethnicities within being a black person, right? Being black is just classifying somebody as like, oh, you're dark skinned, so you're different than us, right? It's a means to oppress. Um, but I think that people can recognize that they have different ethnic backgrounds. You know, they have different roots of culture. You know, I think that there's nothing wrong to be prideful of that. And I think that a lot of people have turned away from progressive movements because sometimes progressive movements go too far in making feel people feel guilty. I think that, like, yeah, people people should be able to feel like they have pride that of, of their ethnic background. You know, like, white people shouldn't be shamed if if they're they're proud that that they are Europeans, but it's the flaunting of that pride as if they're better than other people that is wrong and racist, right? It's 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 like. But the thing that they have to understand also on the flip side is that the most vulnerable groups need to be brought up and lifted up. This is why there's Black History Month, you know, uh, because. All the rest of the history is white history, right? Anybody saying, oh, well, there's no white history month. Oh, like, why can they say white? Why can they say black power, but not white power? It's because black people feel like they're powerless in our society. They don't have as much power, right? So that's why when, you know, it, a quote from the Bible is saying, uh, there's this quote from the Bible about, um, uh, there was a shepherd, uh, I think, or and Jesus told the shepherd, there was this story about the sheep and the sheep. There was one missing sheep, right? And somebody asked, "Why does why does why does the shepherd?" Somebody asked Jesus, "Why did the shepherd send all the other sheep out to look for that one sheep?" And it's because until that one sheep is found, until the missing, until the weakest link is brought up to be as strong as all the other sheep that aren't lost, right? <laughs> The, the whole group of sheep are like they're lost because they're because they're missing one of their brethren. Do you understand what that what I'm saying? But yes, people are really divided and like this type of language is uh, divisive, but at the same t it, at the same time it's like this what I'm saying is not, is, is a better world. You know, we are trying to work for a better world. So it's, it's not so much about, oh, these people are trying to divide and conquer. Yes, the political system has been manipulated to divide and conquer because really the political system is like a circle, right? So when you, so you could be like moderate pro status quo and you're like middle of the road in between Democrat and Republican. But when you go all the way around to the other side of liberal, right, all the way around the other side of that political spectrum, all the way to communist, right, once you get, once you get to the top, you are like the ultimate conspiracy theorist. You're an anti-establishment person, right? If you go all the way around the conservative side of the right-wing side, right, you, get, you reach anarchy. You're, you're like the, with the libertarians. Then you become an anarchist where you believe that there shouldn't be any government. Okay, so with the ideology of communism is that the utopia of, of what the ultimate liberals are, are saying is that once you get all the way to where you do communism perfectly, right, without corruption of fascism, what you have is you can completely eliminate government because everybody's reached the state of utopia where nobody is being selfish and you don't even need to control and monitor the situation because everybody just does what they need to do because they want to live in this, they want to continue living in this utopia. So if you go all the way around the political spectrum of the left side, you come back to anarchy again, right? 
An at the top, you have anti-disestablishmentarians, and at the bottom, you have uh, the status quo, people that, are, that want things to stay the same. Those are the middle-of-the-road people. But what the Illuminati and the current system has done is they've broken this political circle into a spectrum. Because that is the divide and conquer right there. Because if you have the, uh, the socialists, the ultra-left, and the ultra-right that want to disestablish the establishment, coming together and agreeing with each other and, and working together, then you actually can disrupt the system, right? But if you split them apart and make them arguing with each other, well, then it's, they're very easy to control, right? Does that make sense? Oh, gosh, that's a no-brainer. Trump or Biden? Come on, man. You think I'm going to vote for a, a white supremacist, a sex offender, pedophile? Right? There's numerous examples of Trump being a pedophile. Okay? Numerous examples of him being racist. We're just talking about his character. He's a New York City con artist. Right? And yeah, Biden's an old man that's made old man gaffes of saying things that could be, but be offensive to black people because he's an old white man saying this. Look, Look at the generation he's coming from. Everybody from that generation is a little bit racist. The truth about racism is everybody today is a little bit racist. The only problem is that racism has become such a demonized word that people won't are so afraid to look at themselves and look at the ways that they themselves are a little bit racist. They're so afraid of, of just admitting that they're a little bit racist that they can't change. They, they're unwilling to change themselves. Do you know what I'm saying? So... If everybody could just realize and admit to themselves that we are all products of living in a racist society, we are all a little bit racist to a certain extent, that, you know, stop demonizing the word racism so that people that are really racist can maybe start to turn inwards and look at themselves, then we can start um, addressing racism. But anybody saying, oh, people of color can't be racist, or, oh, like, you're so horrible because you're racist, right? Um, they're just perpetuating the problem of racism because they're making it harder for people to address racism within themselves, right? If, if more liberal activists, more anti-racist activists come out and say, you know what, I'm a little bit racist too, but this is something that I'm trying to address in myself and change, then you would have more progress. Really what needs to be demonized is white supremacy, right? White supremacy is actually different. It's, it's a form of racism, but it's an extreme form of racism. Right? Um, it's like people that already have the power trying to hold on to that power of whiteness. Like, it's really messed up. And this is, this is why people are bleeding in the streets today. Uh, only, Trump, Biden only had a few racist remarks. And what I could say about Biden is the man played second fiddle to the first black president ever. Okay? If that is an anti-white supremacy, I don't know what else is. Right? The man, you know, played the supporting role. He played the sidekick of the black man, right? Trump would never have been able to do that, okay? Like, my, my fiancé's father was a Cuban Republican, okay? And even though he's a Republican, he worked for Trump, and he can honestly say that Trump is very, very racist, okay? This is, this is like two degrees of separation, you know? Um, but also, Trump is just trying to dismantle American democracy himself, Trump is saying that he will cheat to win. And the Republicans' defense during this impeachment trial, which they weren't willing to hear evidence, they said that their minds were made up before the trial even started and that the, um, they were going to take cues from the suspect. That is not justice, right? I don't know how anybody can say that that is justice if they wouldn't even take into account the evidence on hand, if they wouldn't let John Bolton testify. You know, they're playing dirty little tricks. And yes, impeachment had bipartisan support. The anti-impeachment side was completely partisan. And that's why we need to vote out Republican senators, get Moscow Mitch out of there, right? Yes, I'm saying go for the lesser of two evils. But at this point in time, if we don't get Trump out of there, we are not going to have democracy anymore because the Republican defense of him was saying that they had four different defenses that played out, right? First, it was that, oh, there was no collusion. When they couldn't prove that there was no collusion between Trump and Russia, when they couldn't prove that he was obstructing justice, you know what they said? And, and trying to cheat in the elections uh, and, and using his own personal interests, uh, 
putting his own personal interests above the interests of the Amer of America and being the president, when they couldn't prove that, you know what their final defense was? Their final defense was that, oh, well, Trump, by trying to cheat to win an election, Trump was acting in the best interest of America because in Trump's mind, he thinks that himself winning re-election is in the best interest of America, right? Did you hear that? You guys caught that, right? The Republicans actually admitted that Trump was trying to cheat in an election and they didn't care, right? Because as Attorney Barr said when he was interviewed and he was asked, are you worried about how history will view you? Are you worried about the conflict of interest of the Department of Justice um, and eroding the system of checks and balances by being the personal attorney of President Trump when they're not supposed to be. You have to know why he fired Jeff, Jeff Sessions because Jeff Sessions actually honored the, the Constitution and the system of checks and balances, right? That's why he was fired. That's why all of Trump's uh, cronies, why they will get fired and why Stephen Miller is still there, right? We'll talk about his racism in a second, uh, is if you put the Constitution before your loyalty to Trump when you are working for Trump, you will get fired. What uh, Attorney Barr's answer to how he will be remembered is he said, well, um, about his legacy and about, about going against the Constitution and the system of checks and balances, uh, because the Justice Department is supposed to be separate from the executive. He said, well, uh, he said something about, well, there's worse things in life, and history is written by the winners. So this is the Republican attitude, is that they can do as much dirty stuff as they possibly can, and so long as they keep winning, they, they, get to, they think that they get to rewrite history. Keep in mind that these are also people that don't know how to order food on the internet. I agree with you, YB. I totally do. No, I mean, look, if you if you add up all the instances of Trump being racist and all of the instances of Biden being racist, you're going to have like Biden being at like 3% of the racism and Trump being at a, at a, at 97% of the racism, right? I mean, Trump from the get-go, he was he was Look, Trump is, is, has been found guilty of housing discrimination against black people. Um, oh, yeah, totally. And, like, you know, Trump was in orgies with Epstein and a 13-year-old girl. So, like, you know, he was placed there by multiple people. And the 13-year-old girl was pressing charges against Trump until he intimidated her, you know. Um, it's, it's pretty messed up. You know, and, and the reason why Trump is going to cheat to win and try to suppress your vote uh, and try to make it harder to vote, why he doesn't want mail-in ballots, is because he knows that when he loses, he is going to go to jail for uh, obstruction of justice because he did he did do witness tampering, obstruction of justice. And if, if he really didn't have anything to hide, right, when somebody doesn't have anything to hide, what do they do? They open up their home and they say, okay, Here's all the evidence. I'm going to hand you over all the evidence, right? Because all the evidence shows that I'm not guilty, right? When you have something to hide, what you do is you block all the witnesses from testifying, right? That's what you do. You try to silence all the media. All, you know, you try to silence everything, accuse them of slander, try to stop the book from coming out, right? Trump doesn't have a slander case against Bolton or his niece. You know, he doesn't have it. Right? That's not why Bolton isn't. That's why Bolton's not getting sued by slander. They try to um, intimidate people and, and threaten it, but he's not going to waste millions of dollars when he knows he doesn't have a slander case. Yeah, we just got political. Um, here's the thing about Trump: is Trump is trying to take credit for the hard work that other people are doing. Also, I studied economics, and it takes many years for. Um, public policy to affect economics, right? So all of the economics, much of the economics that we're seeing today is actually still a result of Obama's policy, right? Trump, yeah, he cut taxes for the wealthy rich. You saw it happen, you saw it in the stock market because then the wealthy rich had more money to pump into the market. Really, they're inflating the market and creating a house of cards. But 
Trump trying to say, oh, black unemployment is down, right? Trump didn't do anything to, to cause that. Trump actually, by a lot of his policies, his direct policies directly had unemployment go up, right? There was job cuts because of Trump's actual policies, right? Farmers are hurting, right? Manufacturing is still hurting. Unemployment, all of these statistics saying, oh, black unemployment is down. Yo, these are also old statistics. Trump was trying to take credit for this as soon as he was elected, right? Yo, this was Obama's work. This is a con man that tries to take credit for the good things that other people do. He's done so his whole entire life. And it's like, yo, if you should look at his track record before you make such a judgment. If anything, Trump called said, laziness is a trait of the blacks. He called whole black communities groups of animals, right? He said that whites, some white supremacists are good people, right? He said what, uh, Black Lives Matter is a hate group, right? Be just because they wanted to paint Black Lives Matter on the street in front of Trump Tower, he tweets this, right? S this is an example of Trump still having a con conflict of interest with the presidency because as soon as it's going to happen in front of his Trump Tower, he is making a big stink about it, right? It's like he didn't say that until he personally felt like like his assets were being hurt, you notice? Sorry, he is corrupt. And, and it, unless... No, no, no. That's always the argument that people say is they say, oh, it's out of context. Oh, Trump was just joking. Oh, you know, it's not taken out of context. He said that those groups of white supremacists, some of them are good people. That's what he said. This is the context. He contextualized it. It's like, it's like ridiculous. It's like, I hear the same arguments. Trump says the most ridiculous things that are divisive, right? He was quoted by the El Paso shooter, right? The, in the El Paso shooter's manifesto, you could see that he was directly influenced by the Fox News Trump feedback loop. Okay, so I ask you, Luke, how many excuses are you going to make for Trump? Because I hear it all the time. Oh, he didn't read. He didn't read the briefing. Oh, he didn't hear them say uh, white power, right? Like, how many times are you going to let Trump play dumb before you just admit to yourself that he's dumb, right? He's either dumb or he's a white supremacist. Which one is it? That's the question. No, he, but he totally said that, he said, in reference to, to several groups of white supremacists, the Proud Boys, those neo-Nazis, right? He referred to those groups when we were in a national crisis, when there was hate crimes committed where the, the, the people inflicting the violence who killed and hurt people were on the side of the white supremacists, right? He tried to deflect and blame the counter protesters who all the video accounts are showing were reacting in a peaceful manner, right? He tried to deflect and say, oh, these peaceful protesters that were counter protesting racism are to blame. And then he tried to say that the white supremacists, many of whom are good people, right? In reference to groups of white supremacists, he said, many of them are good people, okay? I don't know how out of context that could possibly be because that was the context of his statement. I, I just got to call it how it is. Yeah, I mean, he calls black people thugs. He said, the only people I want, he's like, laziness is a trait of the black. I, blacks, it bothers me when I hear, black, when I see black people counting my money. The only people that I want to see counting my money are wearing yarmulkes, right? Stephen Miller, right? One of the longest people, one of the only people that's remained on the Trump campaign. This is the guy that's charged with writing Trump speeches on race equality. This man, uh, if any Trump supporter is still on here, I want to ask you, how is this not racist? Okay, Stephen Miller asked the news in 2016 when the Trump election was happening. He asked the news, please report in emails that were leaked. Please report less on crimes committed by white people and report more on crimes committed by black and Latino people. He did so because he wanted to stir fear amongst white people about crime, right? He, about crime of minorities and illegal immigrants. This is part of the Trump strategy was to make everybody afraid and angry 
And that way, when, when they're acting on emotions, they're not acting um, intelligently. They're acting stupidly, right? They're not voting informally when they're voting based on fear and hatred, right? So already the media reports a lot on crimes committed by blacks and Latino people, but he asked the news to report disproportionately on crimes committed by blacks and Latinos. And this was part of the Trump strategy. How is that not white supremacy, right? To make, to make one, two groups of races seem like they're more criminals than they actually are, and one race to seem like they're less criminals. And you have to ask, why has Stephen Miller not been fired for this? Why has he been kept on the longest out of anybody, right? This is also the same man who came up with the whole plan to lock children in cages and to do family separations, right? Stephen Miller is very, very racist. And, you know, what's really important to Trump is you be loyal to him. Here's the thing about secret societies and control and power and loyalty is when you have an organizational structure, if you have a means to make people loyal to you, like paying them lots of money, um, in which they will go against their concept of right versus wrong in order to stay loyal to the organization or to the leader, right? Um, that's, that's a means of control, and this is a means to where um, you will amass a group of evil people all together because you have people who are willing to uh, ignore their concept of right and wrong in order to make more money. You, you hear me? So the thing about uh, the Trump loyalists that, that he still has working for him, because Trump, out of all presidents, Trump has had the highest turnover rates of, of people working for him um, because basically what he's had to do is he's had to weed out all the people that value the Constitution and right versus wrong more than loyalty, loyalty to him. Now the people who are left are all the people who value their paychecks and still working in the right house more than right, right versus wrong, right? So right there, you're going to get, and, and the way, and here's the other piece of that, is that when you have people that are in that group that are doing evil, right? Evil loves evil, and here's the reason why, is because if you all share the same dirty little secret, then, then nobody, and this is what cults and secret societies do, they get dirt on you. This is what the, the Scientologists do. The Scientologists make you confess all your dirty secrets so that if you are ever to speak out against them, then they ha can hold dirt over your head up against you that, oh, well, we have this dirt on you, so if you speak out against us, we're going to speak out against you. This is how people, evil people, can amass in these you know organized crime or evil groups is because they all share this common evilness, right, together. Do, do you guys understand? And, and that prevents them from speaking out against, against the evil. It's like, well, they're, they're evil too. So it's like, you know, they're going to be shown to be a hypocrite and their evil will be exposed as well if they speak out against the evil in total. Um, you know, it's the loyalty thing. What's everybody saying? Yes. Yes, yes, I love, I love all of your con what you guys have to say, and I'm glad you guys are on the same page. You know, I know it sucks to say I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils, but I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils this time because, as I said, if Trump gets another four years, Trump is going to stop at nothing to um, destroy democracy, right? Because Republicans have already shown that they will use voter suppression and gerrymandering to steal democracy from you. Right, they've already said that winning is the most important thing, that winning is more important than democracy. This is what Trump and the Republicans have said to people. Winning is more important than democracy. I would rather have democracy and vote for a loser. You know why, you know why Biden won over Bernie? It's because Bernie Sanders supporters 
They're younger, right? They're younger demographic. And it's harder to get young people out to vote, right? I know because I missed voting. I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. In the past two primaries, I did not vote for Bernie Sanders. I suck, right? I, I had the mail-in ballot. And because I am so busy, because I'm a young person that has to work to survive, I'm not old and retired, I don't have infinite time to just go out on a non-holiday and vote, right? I had my mail-in ballot, and I put it in the mail a couple days too late, you know? We should have voting on your phone. Bernie Sanders wants to make voting a holiday, you, you know? Should, you should vote on your phone. But it's like there's so many more... Biden had a larger percentage of his supporters actually turn out to vote than Bernie Sanders did. Also, Bernie Sanders made a few pivotal mistakes that made him lose a lot of support from the Democrats. He really did have a shot this time, but when he sympathized with uh, Fidel Castro and said the thing about Fidel Castro, all the Democrats like pooed themselves because they're like, oh, dang. Bernie Sanders just said something really dumb that basically in one statement he just lost the entire state of Florida. There's no way he could possibly win Florida with that state, you know, with that statement on his record, you know, because you know South Florida, all the Cubans who are uh, fled, communists. Mm. Um, also, Bernie Sanders, you know, part of the problem is that he is not willing to play the game. Sometimes to have real change and revolutionize the system, you have to play the game from within. Bernie Sanders wasn't willing to play the political game. He wasn't mailing out birthday cards to all the other Democrats. Right? He wasn't swooning the other Democrats. You know, right now we live in a corrupt system where you need, um, you need to accept donations from lobbyists and you need, you know, you need to get all these super PAC contributions and Bernie Sanders wasn't willing to play that game. You know, I mean, I more power to him for trying to revolutionize the system because really, to really have the system be supported by the people, we need to eliminate campaigning. I was raised Baha'i, and in Baha'i, it's a religion where they believe that you should not campaign. You should not accept donations. You should not accept uh, corporate financing to finance your campaign because then you have to appease the corporations that you are reliant on money for. So in that way, the corporation or the rich man has a larger vote, has a larger influence on the politician than the people do. We all each as individuals, as spelled out by the Constitution and democracy, all need to have an equal vote in the system. Just because you're rich, you shouldn't be able to have a stronger influence on politicians because you should donate money to them. And that's part of the reason why we're in the situation we are today. Eliminate campaigns. In the Baha'i faith, they have um, a system by which their administration in the faith is elected based on community rapport, based on people's, it's like somebody starts doing service, the community takes notice, wow, this person's really serving our community. They're really smart and they have some good ideas. And the ballots are closed. Nobody is allowed to jump up and say, vote for me, vote for me, everybody. You're not allowed to do that. It's all based on personal reputation within the community. And thank you for your donation. Wow, astronomo. I'm, I'm making more donations today than when I was street performing. It's like I'm saying things that resonate pe with people, and that makes me happy. And people want to show their support for the good ideas because we want to change the world together. And thank you for supporting me uh, because I have not received unemployment. Uh, I lost all my summer tour gigs. Well, the problem is, is that, like, yeah, we, we have third parties, but the third, there's no way that the third parties are going to win because... All of society has this concept that you have to vote either Democrat or Republican and voting third party is throwing your vote away. Uh, so it's like, yeah, in 2016, I voted third party because I was like, Hillary is awful, Trump is awful, I want to give more validity to a third party. And heck, in my state of Arizona, um, ooh, thank you, sweetie. My state of Arizona... Um, the Libertarians got 9% of the vote, which was pretty surprising. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Can I have more of that, sweetie? Yeah. Mmm. I mean, Baha'is... How about eliminate all political parties? Like, you're not supposed to have a political party. Why can't an independent win? And you'll notice Bernie Sanders is now an independent. 
He's no longer a Democrat. Because here's what happens. This is what the corporate will, will with Leo liberals is that right-wingism is corporatism, right? Corporations want right-wingism because they want to be able to do whatever they want. They want to be able to pollute whatever they can. Trump reduced pollution restrictions. How do you like bad air to breathe? Um, they want to be able to have as, hardly any taxes to pay. Um, corporations are a machine that, you know, only answers to their investors. So right-wingism, the reason why Bolivia had a revolution, for example, a right-wing uh, coup was because a bunch of banks and, and um, fossil fuel companies wanted to be able to go into Bolivia and exploit the resources and invest there and make a bunch of money off of Bolivia. Um, the socialist president wanted the indigenous president, who's slightly socialist, wanted the natural resources profits to be shared by the people entirely. And so they staged a right-wing coup to get in right-wing people in there so that the banks and the fossil fuel companies can go and exploit the natural gas reserves and the lithium reserves that are in Bolivia. So what corporations have successfully done is they've pulled both parties, Democrats and Republicans, further to the right. Neoliberalism, what the Clintons pioneered and did, was basically, they basically have converted the Democrats to where Democrats are the new Republicans and Republicans are the fascists. That's where we're at with the political parties. Mm, sorry about that. Mm. These are fried mushrooms. Yeah. They're so good. So yeah. No, no, no. Grab it. <clears throat> I have to tell you that the voting thing, this is part of voter disenfranchisement. This is part of especially a right-wing way to win. Because the right wing represents such a small minority of people in actuality, they have to use media like Fox News and Alex Jones to lie to people, just tell them what they want to hear. This is getting back to the system of belief. If you want to believe in something because it feels good, you will find whatever you can, information, to believe in it. Um, so you feeling like voting is just, you said voting is just acceptance of the system, right? This is an attempt by, this is a right-wing attempt to get you to not vote because if you don't vote, they are more likely to win. And to making people feel disenfranchised like their vote doesn't count, this is all a right-wing strategy to get fewer voters. Voter suppression, gerrymandering are two of their strategies of a group that represents a small minority to win. Hmm. I want some more. Did you make some more? Did you make... Thank you, Boba. Mmm. Anyways, guys. It's been an hour. We have to, um, close it. If, um, I'll... Is there anything that anybody else wants to talk about? Before I say goodbye. Sorry about that. Have them um, ask you questions. Do you guys have any questions for me other than how do I levitate? I don't get it, grab it hard. 51% want to steal from 49%. It's more like 1% wants to steal from 99%. I, I don't see where you're getting your numbers from. <clears throat> thank you, Love Light. I appreciate you as well. And thank you guys for your tips. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't asking for donations, but I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Um, stay tuned for more videos. I'm gonna start releasing more videos soon. I appreciate each and every one of you. It's been a really awesome discussion. Unless you can type really quick and there's some burning desires. Um, yeah, I'm glad that people could see it as truth, you know. Some people have really been tricked. Uh, you know, there's a lot of deception going on. A lot of deception. Because now we live in the information age where the facts and information are so available. 
right? But now, because of the internet, they're having to try these new strategies of, of disinformation, disenfranchisement in order to win. We can win this, guys. We are the people. Okay, stay smart. Don't forget to have children, too. I know it's weird, but you're welcome. Grab it hard. Goodbye, everybody. I love you all. And just remember, things will always get better. You know, if there wasn't a struggle, if there wasn't like a fight you had to wage, then there wouldn't be a good story to tell when you die. <laughs>